So I'm mm -hmm. uh, like, when I tell you forgiveness is not about the other person. No. Like it really is sincerely about you wholesale completely. And as you were talking, this other thought came to my mind as well. And a part of me feels like the reason why we like to stay offended and we can't forgive people and we can't move forward, I think is part, partly due to the fact that I don't think we like to receive our part in the failure of relationship. <laughs> Say that again. We're, ta we're talking about failure, right? We're talking about a greater force than failure. <laughs> we don't like to take responsibility for our part in the failure of relationships. We Ooh. only like to, to think about what the other person has Ooh. done to us, but we never want to sit with what we have done to the other person. Ooh. And it is always a two-way street and to acknowledge that a relationship has failed mm. Mm. and to forgive the other person in order to do that you mm. would have to acknowledge what you did to them mm. Mm. and you mm. would have to acknowledge that i played a part in the failure of this bond mm -hmm. and i don't want to do that so I'm going to mm -hmm. hold on to the offense. I'm going to hold on to my anger. I'm going to hold on to my feelings. I'm going to hold this grudge because I am, I am perpetuating the mental narrative that you exclusively are to blame for the termination of this relationship because it was your actions. Mm, 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 mm. Listen, we need to pause right there. I mean, like that, that, that's, that, that is serious right there because honestly, many of us are in bondage right there, Claudia. I mean, right we're there. in bondage right there, right? We okay. don't want to forgive. Many times we say that we don't know how to forgive or we say yeah. the process is too hard or, or we don't want to go through all the emotions, right? If yeah. oh, that if I forgive you, then I'm giving you a pass or sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes we like being a victim. Ooh. we enjoy being the victim because it, it gives you a sense of power that's it. which is really dangerous right sometimes like you said we don't want to take involvement for our responsibility right now if you are watch as you are watching this i want to invite you to just say lord help me Lord help me. Lord help me. Lord, help me. It's shining the light right now on your own heart, yeah. life, your own world motives. Put it in God's hands right now because we want to be changed. We want to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Yes. And forgiveness is intentional work. Yes. Work, intentional work. But praise God, it's the ownership is not on us to do it all by ourselves. No, it's the work of the Holy Spirit when we open our hearts and when we surrender. Yes, absolutely. And to and to the the, the piece about repositioning, um, a pastor, uh, I don't know if you if your followers might know him, uh, Pastor David Franklin. Mm -hmm. He preached a sermon some time ago, and he talked about the fact that in life, we always have different levels. And he uses Jesus's life as an example of this. So mm -hmm. Jesus had the three. He had Peter, James, and John. He had the 12. Mm -hmm. all these are all circles around him, right? So he's got his inner circle, that, that three. He's got the another circle with the 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. Then he's got another circle with the 70 plus. Mm -hmm. And then technically there's another circle that is the masses. And we have to figure out who is where. Mm -hmm. nice. Who is in the group that is in the masses, meaning who are the individuals that I am supposed to be ministering to, but who are not supposed to have access to ministry to me. Ooh. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who am I supposed to be ministering to, but who should not have access to ministering to me? The oh. 70 is, in, is included in that. When we get to the 12 now, it's like, okay, who is in the core? Who are the group of people that, yes, I pour into, 
but they also support me. Mm -hmm. But because they are the 12 and not the three, mm -hmm. I don't take them to my Mount of Olives. I don't take them to my Garden of Gethsemane. Wow. So who are, I didn't, I'm not going to take all 12 of you wow. to my prayer closet where I am weeping and sweating blood. That's not any shade to the 12. Mm -hmm. It's just an, it's an understanding of the mm -hmm. nature of relationships and establishing the proper boundaries for those relationships. Where failed relationships come, I believe, is where we don't know where people are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And we're interacting with mob people like we should be with mm -hmm. three, like the inner, the inner three. And when we get burned by mob people because we brought them in to be the 12 or we had friendship expectations of mob people as though they were the three, then we get in our feelings because what well, I expected, right? This is this is the, the main thing. Disappointment comes merely as a result of expectation. I expected you to do X, Y, Z and you failed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the question, the question we must ask ourselves is, were you even supposed to be in there? Were you supposed to even have that kind of access to me? Are you my person? Are you the person I'm supposed to be coming to for this kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Yes, we see in the example of Jesus that his three definitely let him down. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think that what we learn from that is that there's two things. We've got people that are letting us down that one shouldn't be around us. But then the fact of the matter is, is the people that are called to be in our inner spaces, their humanity is mm -hmm. inevitably going to cause them to let us down. Yeah. Yeah. And if we could mentally make that shift in mm -hmm. our minds away from failure, mm -hmm. and instead we had this mindset of lessons learned, then I can be in relation, I can be in intimate relationship with people and my inner three, they mm. can let me down, but because I don't perceive it as a failed relationship, Jesus now comes to them and says, lesson learned. Hey, I needed you to pray with me in this moment. Now I can share with you authentically and transparently and vulnerably and say, this is what I need out of this relationship. And those disciples rise to the occasion at a later date. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Because they were able to yes. receive, you yes. know, what Jesus was saying. I think we've also got to be willing to communicate. We've got to be yes. willing to say to the people that are assigned to our inner spaces, this is what I needed. Yes. We don't yes. want to, we don't want to have those hard conversations. We just want to say, Failed relationship. Cut. Mm -hmm. Cut. Cut. The, I see this all the time on social media. Cut this person off. 2021, 2022. I'm not going into this year with the same friends. <laughs> You're not going to do me. <laughs> and it's like, we don't know how to actually be in relationship with flawed people. Yes. yes. So it's like, okay, I need to come to you and I need to say, okay, hey, this mm -hmm. doesn't need to become a failed relationship. Mm -hmm. This couldn't be a moment where lessons can be learned, where you can take responsibility and accountability for your part, but I too can take responsibility and accountability for my part. And we can figure out how we can grow together and mm -hmm. in the future continue to meet one another's needs.